Hello, Wildlife Walt here. Welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to teach you how to use a fur machine today just using the head with some very simple steps. Underneath your fur machine you're going to see a chain hanging out. This is to open and close the jaws. All I do is run a hole in my table about in three quarters of an inch, run this cable up through, hook it into the chain, and that will hang down and on the bottom I have a loop and my foot sticks in there and that will open and close the jaws as you're sewing. We're going to change the needle now on a fur machine. I'm going to take this one out. Just want to loosen that maybe a quarter of a turn. Bring the needle out. When you go to put the new needle in you're going to look there's two notches. You want the large notch on the bottom. What I usually do just grab my uh, pliers here. You realize if I can do this with my shaky hands, anybody can do it. You don't want this screw too loose or you're, you'll miss the little notch in the back. Once I get it in place, I make sure it's back in right. And double check, make sure the big notch is on the bottom, small is on top. Now, to know if you're in the right place, be careful bringing your front thing back in or you might bend your needle. You're going to want to bring your arm up and the hole should be right in front of your arm. That way you know your needle's in the right place. We're going to be threading a Osen fur machine today. They're the same as a bonus or a singer, basically. They're all the same to thread. First, you're going to run it through the thread guide and back. Once you're through there, bring it up through the tensioner. And then there's another thread guide in the front you're going to run it through. Give yourself some slack now on the thread. Bring your arm forward and you're going to see another thread guide right there is a little hole you're going to put it through. Put it through there. Now underneath, you have another thread guide underneath. You're going to see a little hole on the side here. And you're going to want to make sure your thread's fluent through here, sliding easily. Then there's another thread guide notch right in where the needle goes through. Give yourself some little bit of play here, and you're going to run it through the front so it goes underneath the needle. And then this little tensioner here that holds, opens, and closes the threads as you're sewing, you put it behind this screw here. Okay, now what I do in the front, you're everywhere now. You're going to cut a little notch there. I always put a little angle on it to make it go into the needle hole easier. And with my bifocals on, I'm going to put the thread through here. That's This is an A machine, and this is the biggest needle you can run on the A, and it's a lot easier to thread. Sometimes you might have trouble on a real light fur, but most of the time this needle works good. It's a 292, I think it is. And that's how you thread the fur machine. My fur machines are set up as very simple, very easy to run, no heavy components. I put a hand crank on it. I use a hose clamp to hold. Basically, I just go to a hardware store and buy these parts. It's not original, but it's simple. Another uh, item you're going to want to know, down here you have this little knob here. You loosen it, slide it back and forth, and that is your stitch width. How wide your stitch is going to be I you just have to play with that in front here is this is the tension bar for the opening and closing these how tight they're going to be sque squeezing your fur sometimes you got to loosen it sometimes you got to tighten it depends on what you're sewing on top here is your tensioner which is very important as you're sewing it depends on things change and you have to loosen and tighten this as you're sewing. You'll know if things are going wrong. One of the first things to check is your tension, whether it's too tight back here or your adjustment here. Uh, the thread I use here, this is a number 69 bonded nylon. Uh, you can also, if you're not doing a lot, you just want something. This is an upholstery thread I, I buy. It's a heavier thread. You can't break it. I got two pieces of raccoon fur here I'm going to be sewing. Get the lined up to where you want to start. You got to tuck all your fur in. That's one of the 
purposes of a fur machine so you can see where you're sewing. Open your jaws up. Get it started there, right in the beginning. Bring it up no more than an eighth of an inch on an A machine, a little less than that. This doesn't have any guides or anything on it. But you'll see the little arm there grabs it and brings it in back, and the needle will put it through the loop. If it's not working, you might have to do a few adjustments, but be careful because you can get it out of adjustment real quick. And I just use a hand crank here, which you've seen in another part of this. I like it because I got total control, but I can still sew fast if I want. And you just keep tucking your fur as you go along. This old machine here is one of my favorites. I don't want anybody even touch it. These are a very temperamental machine. I think they got a mind of their own some days. And just keep tucking your fur, keep it down in. Make sure you don't get that in there. The beginning thread. And I'm going to get to the end here. And there's two different ways to knot it. I do use two different ways. You're going to bring it so your needle's in back. I use my surgical forceps now. Pull the thread up. Bring it out. Give yourself four or five inches. Now there's two ways you could do it. If you pull this right straight through, that's going to lock it. Another way to knot it at the end, you bring your, I'm just going to re sew this here. Once again, grab your forceps, pull your thread through like you do every time. Okay, when you pull this off, leave yourself a little loop there. Don't pull it all the way through like your lock stitch would be. Whoops, grab the right thread, run it through the loop, and I always do it twice. And basically, you're just tying a knot in the end. You put it tight. That holds a little better than the lock stitch because sometimes I have a problem with that starting to come out after a while. I use both. It depends on what I'm doing. When I want to finish it off and I know it's going to be open, I do that. Tie the knot. This is uh, the two pieces I just sewed together. There's your stitching. When you come to this side, you don't even see it. Now, these aren't perfectly matched, but if you do have a match, you don't even know that's two pieces of fur.